That's how I know to sing. I have a speech here, but I'm not going to use it. I, I just need to. I need it for purpose. Teneza, Sekoza, Skyza. And for my aunt right here. Samoyga, Simana, Simoyga. First of all, I just want to thank Rita for the prayer for starting us off in a good way. I want to acknowledge the territory, not Lehuten and Stalatan, for inviting us to this, what's becoming a sacred place for our ancestors as the Dakar, the Sekani, the Kiksan, all of us, our relatives that attended this institution, what was described as supposedly a school, but many of the survivors described it as a prison, a concentration camp. I want to acknowledge all the chiefs, hereditary chiefs, allies, Kukpi, for coming and witnessing this three days of wiping the tears away. It's important as a part of the healing journey that we all need to do, not only as Indigenous peoples, but as Canada. This dark history of well over 150 years of genocidal policies, that's what it was. And let's not skirt around that term. It was genocide. 150,000 of our children were brought to these schools. And if you look at the definition of genocide, that's exactly what it was. Kill the Indian in the child. Take their language, take their culture away, break up the family, reprogram, assimilate them. That is genocide. Let's not skirt around that term, because that's exactly what it was. So as we move forward, I just want to acknowledge everybody that put this together. Curious County Family Services, Chief Robert Michelle, Chief Larry Newski, Notley and Stilatin for really bringing us together from this very important day. Also want to acknowledge the Kumblista Sakwatnik, could be Roseanne Kasmer. Roseanne is on my British Columbia Assembly First Nations board and when she found out about the 215 children that were found, um, she contacted me I wasn't surprised. I guess none of us are because we heard these stories. I heard it from my aunts, uncles, cousins, relatives, brother and sister who attended this institution, that there were graves. I suppose what was surprising was the sheer number of 215. And as many of our people across this country search these residential schools, that number is going up well over 500. Perhaps this is what was found in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of approximately 4,100 children unaccounted for. And that number could be even higher to 6,000. So how do we move on beyond this? How do we wipe away the tears and begin the healing process first? In our way as, as indigenous people, we gather, we come together, we support each other. We talk about it and we don't skirt around the issue. Then we get the, the willing partners. First Nations Health Authority, perhaps Northern Health perhaps the federal NDP, Taylor Umshua. 
perhaps the federal and provincial governments come forward and not perpetuate policies, genocidal policies that continue on to this day. Our children are still being taken away. We still have MCFD taking our children away. It's perpetuated. We've seen it in the 60s scoop, more recently in the millennial scoop. The lack of resources or the inequity of resources in the case between our organizations, the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society and the Assembly of First Nations versus the federal government. And the lack of resources that are being brought forward and they continue to appeal it. Quit fighting us in court. Give us the necessary resources. You want to help? Put the resources towards and a plan towards to fully implement the 94 recommendations to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. If you want to help, quit fighting us in the alignment of laws here in British Columbia so we can fully breathe life into the United Nations Declaration of Rights and Indigenous Peoples Act, Bill 41. If you want to help as a federal government, I commend this federal government for passing Bill C-15, which is the United Nations Declaration Act. But there's a long journey ahead. And the trouble is, is that the culture within government doesn't change. And that's the challenge we have, not only as chief and councils, but as governments, they are unwilling to change. They gotta get out of their mindset. We gotta change this structure. We have to dismantle it. Racism exists, it's alive and well in Canada and British Columbia and in all levels of government. It needs to be dismantled and rebuilt with our involvement as Indigenous peoples. I want to recognize all the survivors in British Columbia that went to residential school. And this is why I have my phone. Alberni, Indian Residential School. Ahusen, Indian Residential School. Anaheim Lake Dormitory Residential School in Ilgacho. Christie Residential School in Klaikwat. The Kamloops, Kamloops Indian Residential School. Kitimat Indian Residential School. St. Eugene Residential School in Kootenai Territory. Cooper Island Indian Residential School. La Jack Residential School. Lower Post Indian Residential School. Kwakalitsa Residential School in Chilliwack. Metakatla Indian Residential School. Port Simpson Indian Residential School. Presbyterian Coquitla, Coquitla Indian Residential School. Seashell Indian Residential School. St. Paul's Indian Residential School. St. George's Indian Residential School in Lytton. St. Mary's Mission Indian Residential School. St. Michael's Indian Residential School in Alert Bay. Williams Lake Indian Residential School. Yale Indian Residential School. Yakuat Indian Residential School. 22 residential schools here in British Columbia and approximately 139 in this country. That took approximately 150,000 of our children. What I'm glad and, and what I'm really looking at in the, in the last few weeks as this come to light of the 215 children is that we're giving them a voice this is perhaps a watershed moment that this ceremony perhaps should be carrying on in the next year so we can heal together. 
that's what we as part of our culture need to do there's a long journey ahead and it's not going to be easy but what I'm really hopeful for is the next generation my daughter graduated yesterday and in her class and in her generation they know more about Indian residential schools than the previous generation than the previous generation to that they are more empathetic they were out in the streets for Black Lives Matter and they were announcing racism so that gives me hope that there is going to be change in the future and as we wipe away our tears there is hope for a better future not just for us and as we always say for the next generation and those that were so with that i thank you masai Cho. Thank you, um, my brother. Uh, it's always good to hear him speak. Sitting there, um, looking at him and uh, listening to him, I can't help but remind myself that the reason I am here in front of you and the reason that he's there leading us it's because of all those that are no longer here that have shaped who we are. And it's especially important that it's our parents, but mostly it's our brother and our two older sisters that went to residential school. And it's them that has shaped who we are today. And I just must acknowledge them for all the work that they've done and for um, blessing us with the regional chief te teaching. Um, I'm going to uh, now uh, introduce Candace George, we're going to have the honor song, and then I'm going to have the privilege of introducing Kulpi Christian, and we, he's, we're going to be doing the blanketing with him, and then we're going to have the burning ceremony, and the burning ceremony, all the letters and all of the thoughts that you had that you put on paper, we're going to send them off, and we're going to do that with our spiritual elder, our guide, um, Minnie Thomas, and we're going to burn them in the fire that's to the east. So um, with that, I'm going to ask uh, Candace to come up and sing the honor song. I read this statement and it just stays with me, and I'm sure many of you have seen it. They tried to bury us. Little did they know we would wake the world. And so this honor song is for those 215 that we have lost and all the other ones that have, we've lost. But it's also to honor you, the survivors, our survivors. It's to let you know that we're with you, that we walk with you. That regardless of what they try to do to break our hearts and break our spirits, that we're still here. And we want to honor you with this song and to, to give you strength and to lift you up because we were, one thing that's indigenous people, our main principle, our main law across this country is love. In all the laws, it's love. When we're drafting our own child and family legislation, it will be, our principle will be of love. And that's what we want to show to you today.